Okay, here we are in lesson 3.3. We're going to start talking about function notation. Um, this will be kind of a new idea for you guys. <clears throat> so, what we're going to learn, we're going to use function notation to evaluate and interpret functions. We'll use the function notation to solve and graph functions. And then, of course, real life problems. So, function notation to evaluate and interpret um, we know that a linear function can be written in, and we call this sometimes function form, slope-intercept form, which is y is equal to mx plus b. By naming a linear function f, you can also write the function using the function notation. So this is this, this way of doing it right here is kind of replacing the y with an and they'll, they'll call it a beast. It, the way you say it is f of x, okay, f of x. Um, or like it says here, you can have a g or an h, g of x, h of x, n of x. It doesn't really matter, um, but they, they determined that this would be an easier way to be able to keep track of different functions because if they were all y, then they're named with the same variable. So we have to find a way to be able to name them and distinguish between more than one function the higher up in math you go. So the function notation is another name for y. Um, if f is a function and x is in its domain, then f of x represents the output of f corresponding to the input x. Okay, you can use letters other than f to name the function. So yeah, mathematicians realized early on that they need another notation. So in evaluating it, um, this again is an example out of the book. f of x is equal to negative 4x plus 7 when x is equal to 2 and x is equal to negative 2. So the solution, we will substitute in the negative 2 and the 2 um, each time. So the first one on the left, f of 2 is equal to negative 4 times 2. So f of 2 is equal to negative 1. Um, when f of x, when x is negative 2, you substitute in the negative 2. One thing I want to point out, because this will be very helpful, maybe not in this lesson, but in future lessons, um, what this represents if x is 2 and we have f of x is equal to negative 1, remember what this is still considered the output. This right here is still the output. So f of 2 is equal to negative 1 represents the point on the coordinate plane of the input is x, the output is negative 1. So this is still representing an ordered pair. So here, f of negative 2 is equal to 15. So remember this notation, this function notation is giving us the y value or the output value. So the input is negative 2, the output is 15. So we still need to be able to get these down to ordered pairs at some point. Okay, so let's give this a try. In your student journal, one, two, three, and six, there's quite a lot of them here. Maybe I'll do each one a different color, make it pretty. Okay, so we have x values of negative four, zero, and two. So we want to do um, f of negative four, and that means we're going to take and what I like to do is kind of put my parentheses around the variable and then the parentheses around whatever it is I'm substituting in. So this is going to be like the opposite of negative 4 plus 4. And when you think about that, what is the opposite of negative 4? That's positive 4. 4 plus 4 equals 8. So when x is negative 4, f of x is 8. When f is 0, and we're just substituting it in, Okay, no such thing as a negative zero. So we get four. And when f is two, the opposite of two plus four, negative two plus four is equal to two. So you have eight, four, and two. Okay, for g of x, when, oh, I was gonna change colors for you. Let's go, here, this will be fun. Uh, we'll do g of negative 4. So we substitute that in. 5 times negative 4 is negative 20. g of 0, 5 times 0 is 0. 
and g of 2, 5 times 2 is 10. We will do h of x. So h of negative 4 is equal to 7 minus 2 times this negative 4. So that's like, uh, if I take negative 2 times negative 4, it's like 7 plus 8 or 15. Okay, h of 0, 7 minus 2 times 0, so 7 minus 0 is equal to 7. And finally, um, h of 2, 7 minus 2 times 2, so 7 minus 4 is 3. So it's 15, 7, or 3. Um, next up, changing colors again. I'm going to go ahead and clean this one up. We have some common or like terms. So u of x is actually going to be equal to, when you combine the negative 2 and the 7, um, we would have negative 2x plus 5. And I definitely like it in slope-intercept form. Number 3 really bothers me that it's out of order, but that's okay. Um, u of negative 4, we would have negative 2 times negative 4 plus 5. That's going to be equal to um, 8 plus 5, or 13. So we have 13. u of 0 is equal to negative 2 times 0 plus 5, or 5, because 0 plus 5 is 5. And u of 2 is negative 2 times 2 plus 5. That's uh, negative 4 plus 5, or 1. So it's just being able to evaluate the functions, okay? And that was 1, 2, 3, and 6. That's found on 72. Well, surely you've already found that out. Okay. So interpreting the function notation. So let f of t be the outside temperature, t hours after 6 a.m. explain the meaning. So f of 0 equals 58. Remember that this means um, 0, comma, 58, the input value, or um, this is t hours after 6 a.m., zero hours after 6 a.m. Well, the initial value then is 58, since the temperature at 6 a.m. is 58. That's zero hours after 6 a.m., okay? This represents uh, 6 comma n. So the output of F, when t is equal to 6 is n, the temperature at noon, right? This is 6 hours after 6 a.m. is n degrees Fahrenheit. I know, seems silly because it's just a variable, but that's just interpreting it. Here, f of 3 is less than f of 9. Remember that the 3 is t hours after 6 a.m. So we have 9 a.m. And then we have 9 hours um, after 6 a.m., which is 3 p.m. So um, what we're saying is that the temperature is less um, when t is equal to 3 than when t is equal to 9. So the temperature at 9 a.m., which is 3 hours after 6 a.m., is less than the temperature at 3 p.m. So let's take a look at what this looks like in the example from our book, or from our student journal. Um, number 7, we're just going to do A, B, um, C, and D. So let's take a look at this. So in this case, N of T, it's the number of DVDs you have in a collection after T trips to the video store. Okay, so this represents the ordered pair, um, 0, 8. And T is the time, trips, number of trips. We've taken 0 trips. So 8, the output, is the number of DVDs. So we have, um, or you have, I should say, <laughs> Um, you have eight DVDs um, before making any trips to video store. Okay. All right. So N of three is equal to 14. 
So remember T is the number of trips to the video store. So in this case, we've made three trips to the video store. We now have 14 DVDs. So you have 14 DVDs after making three trips to the video store, okay? N of five is greater than N of three. So the number of DVDs that we have after five trips is greater than after three trips. So, you know, you have more DVDs after five trips to the video store, then, and that's the number five, then after three trips. Sorry, my handwriting is so terrible on this. Okay, and then the number of DVDs after seven trips, so, um, sorry, part, yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay, part C, um, it's like we have, okay, N of seven minus N of two, so is equal to 10. So after seven trips, right, because that's seven is, is the number of trips. So after seven trips, um, you have 10 more DVDs than after three trips to the video store. Oops, wrong number. Then after two trips, let's, let's change that three to a two. We're not going crazy here. Can't change the math, right? Because that's N of two. I think I might have accidentally looked up at number B or letter B, whatever. Okay. All right. So we're going to use this to solve and graph. For h of x is equal to 2 thirds x minus 5, find the value of x for which h of x is equal to negative 7. So in this case, the output is negative 7. So we have to substitute in the negative 7 for the h of x. Then we're going to solve for x. So when x is equal to negative 3, h of x is negative 7. It represents the point on the coordinate plane of negative 3 comma negative 7. Let's do some. All right. So this is number 8 in your student journal. So b of x is equal to negative 3x plus 1 when b of x is equal to negative 20. So we'll substitute in the negative 20 for the output, and we will solve for x. So we'll start by subtracting 1. Negative 21 is equal to negative 3x divided by negative 3. So 7 is equal to x, or x is equal to 7, okay? For number 9, we'll substitute in the 33. That's equal to 4x minus 3, so we will solve 4x. 36 equals 4x, dividing by 4, and we get 9. So 9 is equal to x, okay? Moving on. Graphing the linear function. So we will be given a table, input and output values, plot the ordered pairs, and draw the line. So let's try this one. So we want to graph the linear function. So we are going to have to um, substitute in. So when x is equal to negative 4, we have half times negative 4, right, we're substituting it in, and then we're subtracting the 2. So all we're going to do is take every number here and solve. So half of negative 4 is negative 2, um, negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. Okay, so the output is negative 4. Half of negative 2 is negative 1, negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3, Half of 0 is 0. 0 minus 2 is equal to negative 2. Half of 2 
minus 2. So half of 2 is 1. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. And then half of 4 minus 2. Half of 4 is 2. 2 minus 2 is 0. So these are the values we would fill in the table with. Negative 2, negative 1, and 0. And then we'll graph. So negative 4, negative 4. Make this thicker. I forgot I can do that. So negative 4, negative 4. Ooh, pretty good. And then negative 2, negative 3. Ooh, awesome. And then 0, negative 2. Yay! And then 2, negative 1. And then the 4, 0. So that when we try to draw the line, ooh, and we get a straight line, you will probably want to use a straight edge. Cardstock works great, or like an index card for a quick and easy straight edge if you're doing it on paper. All right. And finally, um, the real world problem that we have. It says the function b of m is equal to 50m plus 150, and it represents the balance in dollars in your savings account after m months. But the table to the right shows the balance of your friend's savings account. Who has the better savings plan? Well, hmm, I mean, one thing you could like kind of look at this and say, wow, after two months, um, you know, using your equation, right? Um, the reality is they're probably both linear. We know for sure that yours is linear. You could kind of look and see how is this changing, right? It looks like it's going up 80 and going up 80 and it's changing by two months here, by two months here. So the rate of change is $80 every two months, which is equal to $40 per one month, okay? Um, our rate of change is $50 per month, as indicated by the rate of change or the slope. Um, you know, after two months, one, you know, just problem solving here, 50 times two plus 150, um, Oops. You know, we only have 100 plus 150 or 250, right? But after two months, your friend has 330. Well, you know, you have to remember that your friend probably started with more money than you. You only started with a balance of 150. But for at some point, you and your friend would probably have the same amount of money because the rates of change are not the same. So the savings plan that would be the best would be the one with the highest rate of change, and that would be you. So you have the better plan because after you break even, after you and your friend have the same amount of money in the bank, you will always be increasing by $10 more than your friend every month after that. You have the better plan because you have the higher rate of change. In other words, your plan will increase by $10 more per month after the break-even point, at which point you, you need to calculate that, but that's we don't need to do that at this point. We just need to determine. So we kind of had to look at the rate of change to see who had a better rate of change. And when we're talking the unit rate of change, ours is better. Okay. That is concluding our 3.3 .3 lesson.